Hello, Mike Barrett here again with TestingIsEasy.com and in this video I'm going to share with you the fourth idea that I use to uh, help students feel that they're on the same team as I am so that we can work together to get them better results, which as I've mentioned in the earlier videos is really one of the most important things that you can do uh, if you want to see breakthroughs in your students' achievement. So anyway, in this video I want to share with you the idea of using humor wherever possible. Now, a lot of people uh, don't think that there should be any sort of humorous or lighthearted interaction between teacher and student. This is a terrible idea. Um, as I have said repeatedly, when you have the student in a situation where the student feels defensive and closed in, adversarial against you, it's going to be very, very hard to penetrate that and to get them to open up and learn from you. If you want the student to learn from you, you have to show that you and he or she or Chris, which I've been using because it could be anybody's name. So <laughs> if you want Chris to open up, Chris is your student, you have to show Chris you're on the same team. One thing that helps to disarm people, I think, more than almost anything else, is the use of humor. Now, you don't have to be particularly funny. Uh, God knows there's plenty of people who don't think I'm particularly funny, although I try to laugh at myself a lot. Um, not really sure why. Anyway, whatever. So... <laughs> um, you don't have to be particularly funny, but just making the effort, you know, just trying to cut loose a little bit, um, maybe poke fun at something or, uh, I don't know, ask the, the student about what's going on in their lives and sort of, you know, joke around about that for a little bit. Any kind of thing that you can do like that is going to seriously help to defuse the situation. And once the student starts to see, okay, this is a person who will laugh in front of me, this is a person that I can laugh in front of, all of that reinforces everything else we've been talking about, and it helps show the student you and the student are on the same page. You're on the same team, you are working together, and you are, if not friend necessarily, you are friendly with one another. And that's going to go again a long way towards taking down those defenses, helping the student to open up. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, how can I become funny? Um, if I knew I would tell you, <laughs> I don't really know, obviously. Uh, here are some things you can do. You can try to watch funny movies. You know, you can, this is really big actually, a lot of people don't pay attention to this, but if you are working with people of a particular age group, you know, if you're working with high school students or middle school students or college students or adults with families or whatever it is, you want to find out what do those people like to do? You know, what does a high school student consider funny? And even if you don't think it's funny, you should go watch some movies that that type of person might enjoy that your students you know might mention in in class you should try to expose yourself to some degree to what those people um, like you know what do they find entertaining what do they whatever how do they like to pass the time and then you can make passing reference to those things you can um, perhaps use maybe inside jokes or any types of uh, things along those lines and I'm not like trying to suggest that you manipulate people that might be coming across that way. It's not what I mean at all. What I mean is you're trying to get through to this person. You're trying to connect with whoever the student is, with our good friend Chris. And you're trying to show Chris, you know, here's how I can help you get better at whatever Chris-like things you're faced with. So you want Chris to see that you can help with all of these things. In order to communicate that idea effectively, you have to think like Chris to some degree. You know what I mean? You have to make references that Chris gets. You have to get Chris's references. You've got to do all these things. So if you want to be able to be uh, maybe humorous, laid back, fun, whatever it is around Chris, you've got to know what's going on with Chris. And one of the ways to do that is just to sort of you know, get an idea of what Chris-like people enjoy doing. There's nothing sneaky or slimy or dishonest about that. It's going to make you a much, much better teacher, a much better tutor, a much better relater, and a much better communicator. And ultimately, that's all teaching is, right? Communicating things, uh, practical things, in an effective way. So, um, one tool then, again, like I said, is to go out and try to immerse yourself in the types of things that Chris and Chris's friends uh, might find humorous. Another thing that you can do, although this is going a little bit beyond, maybe, um, you can certainly study how to be funny. There are books on being funny, books written by stand-up comedians, books written by Steve Allen. He has a great one, which I think is actually called How to Be Funny. Uh, and believe me, there's few things that are less funny than a person who tries to force being funny. But just sort of opening yourself up to these ideas, you know, and trying to be more laid back, a little silly sometimes, a little nonsensical, willing to laugh at mistakes that you make instead of pretending like they didn't happen. You know, all, all those types of things 
are really going to help break down the barrier between you and the student, which, as I have said millions of times, is really, really, really going to help the student open up around you, help the student try, help the student not be afraid to fail, all this stuff. Very, very important. So very powerful, very simple. No need for this to be weird or um, you know, forced or anything. Just how about this? At least open yourself up to the idea. Students can be funny, and you can be funny around them. Just kind of let that go from there. You know. Uh, okay, so thanks very much. Try to implement this idea. This one's kind of a hazier one to do because what's funny varies with age groups and uh, geographical locations and the time and you know all this stuff. But at least be open to the idea. And I think that you will see when people are laughing, they really do relax a lot more. You know, actually, let me throw in one other thing uh, real quick right here. I am an SAT tutor and an LSAT tutor, GRE, GMAT. I do all those uh, tests, ACT, PSAT, subject tests, AP tests. Basically, any kind of standardized multiple choice involving a thing uh, I help people with. And most people really hate those things. I don't know anybody, well, actually, it's not true, but <laughs> I don't know many people who enjoy taking the SAT or the LSAT or whatever. Even though that's the case, I can't tell you how often a student or the student's parents will tell me, you know, I really look forward to our phone calls. I really look forward to us hanging out together. That's what they call it sometimes. Or like I'll teach, you know, a one-day class on the SAT, and I'll have parents call me up days and weeks later and say, you know, uh, Joey still can't stop talking about how great your SAT class was. And it's not, well, it is partly that the information is awesome. <laughs> That's true, okay. But it's not just that, you know. When you have a room full of... Um, 15 and 16 year olds like I do when I have a, a one day SAT class to keep their attention for 9 hours from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. when you're talking about the SAT which they really don't want to be taking or at least are not excited about taking to do that requires um, well it requires a lot of the things we've been talking about in these videos but it certainly requires some openness to the notion of humor you know if I hear some guys joking around about some stupid thing in the middle of the class um, during one of the breaks, I'll go over and be like, hey, you know, I heard you talking about blah, blah, blah. Did you ever think about this? Or, you know, what do you think about that? Or I'll crack some joke with them. Or I'll ask them to share it. But not in like a making them feel stupid way, just in a, this guy said something really funny, I want everybody else to hear it. That type of way. And doing that, again, reinforces the idea we're on the same team. It's okay to cut loose. It's okay to be relaxed. And it is okay. All those things are okay. If you don't have those things, learning becomes almost impossible, which means teaching becomes almost impossible, which is not what you should want. You should want it to be uh, easy and effective. All right, enough out of me for this, and in the next video, I will share with you um, my next idea <laughs> on how to make uh, teaching a lot less confrontational. Thanks.